Well, gentlemen, here we are. We're on the last little bit of this saga. Now, please bear with us. I think we got a little bit of a thunderstorm rolling in, which has been, which is good. We've had 105, 106, 107 degree weather. Today it was 102, it's currently 101. But the wind's blowing a little bit. If we have a little bit of lightning, don't worry, all my shit's disconnected, so. Anyhow, let's get on with this. Everybody wanted to know where the wrap-up video for this install was. This is it. Look, I, I got really busy before the trip to California. I bought, built this truck for this, this trip to California. I bought it so that I could have it to go do exactly what I did in California, not just the interviews, but the main motivational force to make in the trip to California was to carry me, my equipment, and equipment I had here that needed to go home, plus take me to some of these repairs that I needed to do. I found that some of this equipment, it's easier for me to take myself to the equipment than it is to have the equipment brought to me. So this install was solely wholeheartedly motivated around one, convenience, and two, how much power can I cram in a very, 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 very small space. Half the vehicle has to be more than easily accessible to put my equipment, other people's equipment, my portable bench system and me in it, plus all of my stuff to make me be able to go do where I need to go. I need to all go in this thing. So, no, I don't have room for an entire bed worth of batteries. Cool, let's go get really cool kick-ass battery technology. No, I don't have enough room in the back of it for big amplifiers. Okay, let's miniaturize the amplifier. I am gonna revisit the amplifier here in the future. I don't know what I was thinking making a 20 pill amplifier that was so small. Because <laughs> it, it was getting so warm that it literally took the, the BBI logo on the front of it and melted it off. Now at this point you all should have had an opportunity to I don't know, kind of enjoy the, the cup that I have sitting there just on the right of the screen. Yes, I got that from my daughter for Father's Day. Best daughter ever, and I can't help but brag. I thought it was hilarious. She's 15, she got the sense of humor, she bought it for me with her own money. I was pretty proud of her. Okay, the number one question I have gotten out of this entire install series has been this single question antenna placement. Now you got a couple trains of thought that go on with this. Legit, a couple trains of thought that go on with this. We can take and put our antenna right about here in the mobile. And yeah, that's gonna give you the most directionality and make it so you can talk off most of the edges of the vehicle almost universally the same, but I put my antenna back here for one reason and one reason only. Ready? I'm gonna demonstrate it to you. I have my hitch in the back of my truck. I can step on my hitch. I can lean against my vehicle. I can reach out. And under a thunder and lightning storm, I can take the antenna off. I want with a very light, flexible antenna. Believe me when I say I've got all kinds. The Coily double comps are my favorite ones that I like. Shot a lot of skip on those. Remember, this is a ride around truck. So of course everything is color match painted. It's me, it's me, this is the way I like to do things. That is the main reason the antenna is on the back of the Suburban. I wanted to have it a little bit directional off the, in, off the nose of the truck. I've always liked that, I don't know why. I mean, it just works the best in my mind for this particular style of ground plane. So yeah. Well, let's get on with wrapping this up. I wanna show you guys all the little details in this thing. So I guess the best place to start is here, underneath the hood. Um, these mech bands work flawlessly for me. The way I currently have this set up is that I run on one alternator, it's this one, when I'm running around. <laughs> and then when I go and I turn on the amp, I bring this one into play. And I did that to help conserve gas mileage. Remember, this thing is just a ride around truck for the most part. But the principles, like the bonding and that kind of thing, come into play even if you're in a ride around truck. So I ended up going with two super caps. 
they're fully installed and this thing worked great um, the first one of these that I got from MechMan, I put it in and there was something wrong with one of the bearings it would run after about 20 minutes of running it would start making a chirping noise and I thought for a while it was my power steering pump but come to find out it was one of the bearings laid down inside this thing but other than that this thing has run I mean tits it hasn't thrown any codes no check battery lights none of that crap it's uh, just literally run I've got 7,000 miles on this since I've installed it I mean the belt still looks titties everything in here is perfectly clean so I don't know what I'm gonna do yet I don't know if I'm gonna put a Whipple supercharger or a Magnuson uh, supercharger on here I'm still kind of on the fence I'll kick it up a couple hundred more horses I've got the ability let's do it okay we've all seen this I've got many videos covering this um, if there's any questions about the alternator install, I'll put a link down below. Um, the bonding install, I'll put a link down below. The power wire installation, the link will be down below. Okay, let's move on. That's a cool reflection. This the antenna is off the, the, the camera, but look at the beam and the reflection in the window. That's a cool picture. All right, let's go in here and let's talk for a second. So that is set this here that is the messenger amp and then the LTO batteries and these LTO batteries are mind-blowing how well they work let's open up the door to get a little bit more light in here now what I very quickly discovered about 200 miles out of town on my road trip <clears throat> was that this case makes an unbelievable amount of noise rattles shakes makes all kinds of noise and so I'm very quickly back here with a towel, wadded it up between the LTO case and the amplifier to stop the noise. Every bump I went over, every little vibration, squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> I thought I was gonna kill me somebody before I even got out of town. But that is my pickup for the antenna and we'll show it to you on the other side. It's RG393, of course you guys know this from watching the install video. Throughout, I just threw a little 10 here in the back, but I got all this space open. Now, as far as I can tell, the electrical density of these LTO cells is thus that if I was to get four banks of 18 volt batteries and put them in here, that's the equivalent of four banks of 18 volt, 18 volt batteries. So a 12 volt and a six volt battery put together, same equivalent in electrical density. A sixteenth the weight, a tenth the size, maybe even less. Because you got to think most battery boxes sit, they take up the whole back end. Man, if I'm going to go run around, I want to be able to have room to put shit in here. Like go to the break and put all the raffle stuff, plus all the stuff everybody brings me every year at the break. And it, yeah, I got to have room. Got to have room. Daily driver. Daily driver. Okay, let's go look at the other end of things. It is absolutely hilarious to me to open up the back of this thing because I tell everybody the same thing. Dude, the power wire video does not do this justice. This is 1 aught. This is 4 aught. That's 500 mil wire. And everybody comes and they stand right here and they're like, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's, this is impressive. And this worked flawlessly. So, after listening to this thing squeak for the 3,000 plus mile road trip I just went on, it dawns on me that there might be a better way of doing things. The hate tank is coming, you guys. You'll see what I mean here in another video, another day. It's already in the process, been working on it now for two months. Whole nother thing's coming for in here. You'll see. You'll all see. But let's go sit up front for a minute. It's starting to get windy. Let's jump up on in here. Now, this thing is beast mode. <clears throat> First off, steely mounts kick ass. These mounts absolutely kick ass. Google these. They're worth every penny. It's just a uh, little piece of double sided stick tape little piece of double sized stick tape and I've got it for all three radios that are in this truck now look I am a 
I'm going to turn the air on or I'm going to melt to death in here. I'm of the opinion that you should be able to play radio and still be able to enjoy having a drive around ride around truck. And so it's really important to me that I don't molest this space with radio equipment 24 seven. I didn't mind having a radio, but I wanted to still have full access to both my cup holders, have access to my cigarette lighters. I didn't want to have any bird meters in here. And like I said in the Bullet Bob Burns interview, link will also be below. This is inspired by Bob, this whole portion. Now what Bob did is he went and he put two or three Bird 43 watt meters in here. He had them fiberglassed into place and then he had them hydro dipped so that the meters all faced him. Well, I want another direction with it, a total another direction. And on a side note, this is all going to change too. This is going to get, well, that technology is not ready to get released yet. Not quite yet. But there's some really cool stuff coming for the strikers, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, like, groundbreaking, game-changing, nobody else in the game's got this technology, and it's this is all going to change here pretty quick. I had to step out, man. I, was, I had sweat running in my eyeballs and everything. It was... Whew, it's hot. Hot. The dash is telling me it's 84 degrees. I know it's like 90-something. It's just because the air conditioning is running in here. Okay, so... I partnered up with a lot of different people to help make this entire install happen. I partnered up with um, XS, I partnered up with MechMan, partnered up with my friends over at CompuStar, who I've worked with ever since I was in the stereo game. And uh, I also want to work with my friend Larry at Telepost. So, let's come down here and let's turn the radio on. That's that speaker, and it's down here. I ended up installing it down here in the kick. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, I disconnected the powered portion of the speaker. I couldn't get it to work in a high RF environment to where it wouldn't feed back. Let's turn the fan down even a little bit more. To where it wouldn't feed back. So I ended up bypassing it, and this is just the radio straight into the speaker. to the south so I partnered with my buddy Larry over at telepost now I don't know how bad the flicker is gonna be but from where I sit I can easily see this in the bright mode and yeah that's not lying to you it's showing you a 6 watt dead cue with a 0 0.002 reflag this thing works phenomenal okay of course I had to install the dash cam and now that's one of three of the satellite systems that's attached to this thing. I have a GPS tracking system for the alarm, a GPS tracking system for the internal camera system, and a GPS tracking system for the external camera system. This thing is a vault, this truck. I had to do that because one, I'm making it public, and two, where I went, I wanted to know what was going on with my vehicle, what was going on around my vehicle, and what was going on inside my vehicle at all times, even when I was sleeping. I wanted there to be no chance. So, just telling you, this thing is packed full of fun little goodies. This is my 2 meter 70 centimeter radio up here. And then attached to that, I got another neodymium clip that goes up here. And I can run the ICOM 7000, which is all down here in the center console. I ended up taking the center console out. Um, there was the factory sub in here, which, well, as you guys can see in the previous segment there, I pulled that sub out. Down in here is the external speaker, um, the power filtration unit, because I wanted zero noise ripple to come back to the radio, and I wanted to be able to isolate and lift and play with my ground, because all in the center console is two separate audio processing units. And there's the ICOM 7000, um, the 2 meter 70 centimeter ICOM, all the mic plugs and jacks are all across the front of this thing. And they're all hidden, so I can Unplug the mic, throw the mic in the center console, no more radio. 
dash, no more radio. Show no more radio, no more meters, no ugliness. It can be comfortable for everybody to ride around in here and we got room. Before anybody asks, this big clip, believe it or not, is for my phone. I have an LG V60 ThinQ, it is my phone. It's a dual screen thing. It's actually got three, th three screens on it, which is great because over here I could have my navigation, over here I could have the full phone or vice versa, it doesn't matter. So I had to have like a tablet holder, but I mean, this is like a gear mount. The inside of this thing I had to reinforce with aluminum, make this thing stiff enough so when I ran down the road it wouldn't vibrate. But we're sitting here idling right now. We're just a hair over 14. I think we're at like 15.2. Let's come up here. And we're gonna switch on that second alternator. The motor just lugged down a little bit. So that second alternator is gonna kick on and it's gonna push it up to about 15.8. Okay, now that we've overcome the seat belt alarm, with that second alternator on, we can see we don't have any check battery lights. Um, anything over 16 volts or bumping up to it um, will trip the check battery system, blah, blah, blah. Hardwired deep in the belly of the computer's programming. Anything over 16 volts and it doesn't care for it. Um, the thing I like about this truck and that LTO battery is that I turn the truck off and it stays at 15 volts because it's a 15 or well, it's a 16 volt battery. Yeah, I started the truck, the voltage didn't even dip. It started off the super cabs. I love LTO technology. I'd never do anything else. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's turn this off. That brings on the 20 pill. So it's about four watts of reflect with a thousand going out. Hello, one, two. I just got the microphone literally like chilling. Hello, one, two. So I got one whole watt worth of reflect with about a 800 to a thousand watts going out, which isn't bad. Um, hello, one, 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 one. I think maybe 10 watts with about 3,600 to 4,500 going out, depending on how I adjust this. Totally on how I adjust this. But this is a fun little install. It's gotta be clean. The voltage has gotta stay steady and you gotta have zero reflect. I mean, it's just, just what it is. I love this meter though. It's always on. I remoted the face. I took this whole bezel out. This ended up being one solid piece. I had to separate this from the air duct bezel or uh, panel. And this panel and that uh, air duct panel were all, this is a piece, this is a piece, this is a piece. They were all plastic welded together. So I went ahead and separated those out. I took this down to a friend of mine that's got a uh, was it CO2 chromium penis extension pump brag to all my nerd buddies I've got one laser and um, I took the stock box with me and I said I need to cut this opening for this meter and he says okay where do you want it we, j we laid it down on his table jig and then he just plotted it out he goes okay ready Bzz, done didn't have to sand anything didn't have to it, it was clean all the holes were perfect. I mean, it, I've never in my life seen anything get cut so smoothly at all. Um, the trick to making this work remote, um, there's a data cable that comes off the back of this thing. And I had to take that data cable and extend it quite a bit because it had to go down from the dash, around, down, around, down, around, and down, around, and through. So I took a piece of one inch wide ground braid I took regular computer ribbon, which is what the data cable is made out of, extended off of the solder points on the board there. I supported the solder points with 2500 PSI two-part clear epoxy on the back of here. Um, routed the cable around after supporting the cable to this plastic bezel on the front um, because I didn't want it to move. And vibration at that joint would have been a killer for this thing. So. 
um, I secured the cable to this, then I went and I plastic welded all of this back together, which, plastic welded, it sounds like I'm so smart or some shit. I literally took a soldering iron and just remelted the joints back together, uh, round pin nut joints that hold this whole thing together. Put that all back together and rerouted the cable down, brought it around, and sitting down in here underneath the center console down in here is the LP100 box itself. So the cable is extended, then I took the wire and I turned it. So, so about every foot's got three turns in it. And I did that to have what they call wrap cancellation. You never want to have a wire perfectly straight. If you can twist the wire or twist the leads, the RF can't hit it at a straight angle. So you have less chance of a saturation going between the meter and the actual box. That's the reason that they twist wires and why like audio wires are usually twisted. It's because if you can turn them over another piece of wire, as the RF tries to penetrate through the wire and turn that wire into an antenna, if it's got another conductor wrapped around it out of phase, it'll cancel itself. So, twisted the wire, ran it through a piece of ground strap, brought the ground strap back and bonded it to the LP100 box itself, down in here. And then in turn, the face, the opening, for the meter, I blocked off with a piece of phenolic and bonded it shut. Then I took the LP itself and with um, two inch piece wide of ground braid, went down to the frame. I took a piece of clamp over type 61 that had three fourths of an inch opening. So a fairly large round piece. Um, I made the cable so I had a lot of extra length. I had like an extra foot and a half, two feet. And I took that type of 67 clamp over ferrite and I wrapped the data cable through it two or three times killed all the problems all the problems like all of the problems Another one of the things I want to cover is this that is your antenna for your head unit at the front of the truck and I thought for sure I was gonna to have to disconnect that haven't had any problems but of course I don't run around with the head unit on the head unit stays off so it's either radio or it's regular stereo. But then I usually run around with my own music on an MP3 format. The other thing I was kind of curious about was this window here, the rear defroster. Let's talk about the rear defroster real quick. There's a trick that goes along with the rear defroster. Um, I, I was taught this, this is nothing I figured out on my own, believe me. <laughs> I, um, back when I had 64 pills in my white truck, I had a rear defroster. Okay, and I, I went through, I can't tell you how many fuel pumps in that truck, at least four or five. And every time I key that 64 pill, it would shut the fuel pump off. And I tried bonding and grounding and ferrite and shielding and wrapping the leads in this and a tin foil cup on my nuts. And the, I mean, everything you could think of to try and keep it so that when I fired down either the motor wouldn't bog or um, it wouldn't just completely shut the pump off. And I had a very wise person come to me and I can't even remember who it was. It was just one of the guys on Pal Talk randomly. I was talking about how it was pissing me off and he goes, dude, do me a favor. I said, yeah, what? He goes, you got a rear defroster on that truck? And I said, sure do. He goes, just disconnect it. So what do you mean? He goes, just go back Take the rear defroster clip like this. That one don't want to come off. Take the rear defroster clip and unplug it. And try it again. I said, okay. I unclipped it. And the problem went away. And what it ended up being was every time I fired down, the RF was getting on the rear defroster elements, was running back through here, running all the way up into the computer and the computer was shutting the truck off and had nothing to do with the fuel pump. Although it would show as a low fuel pressure or a low fuel pump issue as the code. <laughs> Sorry to rush off on that. I call that, I used to call it old man knowledge. Now I call it experienced radio operator knowledge. My battery almost died on my camera there, you guys. So I was kind of hustling through that last little segment. So here we are about four months into the deal with our bonds. This has been through the car wash about a million and a half times. Believe me, painting this is key to keeping this clean, this butyl. 
I mean, it worked out really good, the ground bonds. But yeah, the fuel pump issue, come to find out it was, you know, the defroster unit. To be able to fix that big issue after taking and dropping my fuel tank like four times and changing fuel pumps and it's the little shit like that that I'm just grateful people are willing to share, you know. Okay, let's go run around to the front side of the truck and let's get this kind of brought home. Okay, so the first thing I do with every vehicle I ever owned, as soon as I get them, I put brand new light buckets in them. Um, <clears throat> these are stock light buckets. They're brand new, but um, the stock ones are chrome on chrome, so it's chrome and then chrome back up in here. I did chrome on black just to match the rest of the truck. I was going to do some owl headlights. They were a thousand bucks and I just, I, I just, I couldn't see it. So I went and bought superior LED lights. I mean, these things are bad. They've got the wire braid heat sink that comes off the back of them. This is the high beam. Um, the low beam, of course, has got forced fan cooling on it, which is really standard now. About five years ago, the new LED headlights that are that came out, that, that, that was really groundbreaking in the brightness and their heat dissipation and their efficiency. But the main thing I was looking after was noise. Usually the LED drivers that are in this style of headlight will create so much noise in your receive from the headlights being on, you end up having problems. Well, the quality, the highest quality LED light that I could get, there's no driver noise. So there's no driver noise here, but the problem is, is the RF from the antenna was causing the headlights, the high beams to click on and off. It's like they were pulse modulating because I was screwing with the light driver inside the LED. So how I got around that is I took two pieces of ferrite and on the harness that comes off the, off the light, I wrapped the, LED, the lights in, in the, the ferrite, both sides. But then down in here, this is so simple. This is a type 67 piece of ferrite. And this is a, or no, uh, type 37? Yeah, type 37 clamp over piece of ferrite that's right here. And another piece of type 37 clamp over ferrite that's right here. This is the main computer for the entire truck. This is the wiring harness for the fuse box, but this is the primary computer for the whole truck. So these two leads, just with a little bit of ferrite around them, this issue completely stopped. Now I can run as much wattage as I want and I'm not running down the road blinking at people. Which I thought was gay, just me. So here we are at the tail end of this story. One, I wanna say thanks guys for watching this entire series on doing these installs or this install. Hopefully I helped somebody. Somebody out there I hope picked up a little bit of knowledge. Um, I did have a guy call me this week. He says, look, BBI, I went through, I bonded the whole frame all the way up and down both sides of my truck, and now it seems like I'm interfering with my speakers more. And all I could do was go, okay, well, that just means you're transmitting better now. <laughs> he didn't understand what I was getting at. And I said, you know, it's all about wire routing, right? So I don't know if I pointed that out or not in the, the video segment. I don't think I did with the coax, where I, I very carefully wire route, I routed the, the coax for everything. All the coax for the radio equipment, everything goes up the middle of the truck. All the speakers and all of that kind of stuff goes on the exterior of the vehicle, like towards the edges and up and down the pillars. The only place that even remotely came close was over um, in the rear corner where I brought the coax down from the roof. And I set that far enough away. And I learned a long time ago that, you know, if you have your speaker wire and your coax laying right on top of each other, you're gonna get in your speakers no matter how hard you try to get out. And usually, usually, I mean, there's a way to get around it. You'd have to add shielding to a ton of, it, it's a lot of work. But usually if you just move the wires apart, you'll end up stopping the interference. But, you know, I, I, I hope he understands how much better he's actually transmitting now by having his vehicle bonded. It's like I said, you might want to think about turning your head unit off when you're talking on the radio. And he says, well, don't matter. I'm coming through the speakers with the head unit off. And I went, oh, shit. Well, that's definitely a proximity issue then. And that's how that question gets answered. 
The reason I tell that story is I want to encourage you guys if out of this any series of videos there's something that you didn't quite understand or you didn't understand the logic behind why I did it. I mean the phone number's right here. It's in every video. The beginning and the end of every video. Um, it's always in the background. That number's there for a reason. Look, I'm not taking on any new work right now. I'm not taking on any new repairs. When people call me, it's because they've got a technical question. Utilize that. If you've got a question, call me. If there's something that you think that you can teach me, call me. I'd love to learn from you. I love to learn, and I love to hear new things. But hopefully this video series has helped somebody learn some new trick about something. Um, we'll look at my business partner's truck. Every time we key down his 24 pill, it would set off his windshield wiper pump. It's like we were sitting there pushing the switch on the dash. We ended up having to put that on its own separate switch. We had to go down and isolate the uh, windshield wiper pump so it wasn't being driven by the signal from the computer. Could never get out of it. We tried a ton of different stuff. We ended up just putting it on its own switch and that fixed the problem. Problem solved. Look, if you've got a tip or trick that you can teach me, or if you've got a question about something you've seen in one of these videos, this series of videos, don't hesitate. Call the number. I'd love to chat with you. That note, gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in, following along, and your continued support. I can't thank you enough. It means the world to me. Like I said, if I've helped one person, I feel like my job is complete. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Click, click.